Hello, I'm Sorin and I'm gonna show you how you can perform remote development on a Node.js uh, based environment. Uh, I have here the demo books um, environment which I deployed earlier. I have started it again. And uh, just as a reminder, we have uh, a backend component written in Express, aka Node.js, uh, a Postgres database, and we also have a frontend written in React. We're going to do a uh, remote development on the backend component. So uh, I have the application running here, the front end, the back end. And without further ado, I'm going to click this remote development button <clears throat> and I'm going to copy the command. I have here my ID open. I'm uh, going to run a command. You can run it in uh, whatever terminal uh, you'd like, uh, obviously. <clears throat> And Banishal will ask two things of me, the source and the destination. So the method of uh, remote development I'm showcasing here is based on file synchronization. We also have a method um, which is uh, not needing any local files. So basically your files will be stored solely in the container. But again, we have here the remote development version with local files. So I have the repository cloned here uh, inside this, uh, this folder, the demo books. And uh, what I can uh, do is to sync this into the cluster. I'm going to abort this and go into the backend folder because it's a bit uh, easier and run the command again. Because for the source um, folder, <clears throat> Bunny Shell prefills the current working directory. So basically, I avoided uh, having to, to write this. And moving on, the second uh, piece of information which uh, it needs is the um, folder location from the container. So I have to admit, I don't know it by heart, but I can easily find it. It's usually the um, working directory from the Docker file. So this is the path user source app backend. This is the path from the container. <clears throat> right now, Bunny Shell is changing my pods definition. It's adding a persistent volume for the uh, code changes so they get, don't get accidentally lost. And it's overriding my uh, start command with an SSH server. So I will have an SSH uh, shell into that container when this process finishes. And it also starts um, the process of syncing the, the files. And this is done by Mutagen, a uh, dedicated tool for synchronizing files into containers. Okay, so it's done. As I said, I'm left with a shell in this uh, container. This is uh, the the working directory, uh, if you remember. Um, one thing I'd like to showcase is that if I refresh the API here, now I'll get a 502 error. This is because no service is started, right? So <clears throat> uh, Bunnishell changed my command to allow me to have this server and I need to manually start the service uh, so that the API is uh, back again. Okay, seems simple, right? Uh, what, however, considering that I'm about to do remote development, I would like a mechanism uh, that will uh, not force me to manually restart the process every time I make a change. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a look into the package JSON of the backend. Uh, application and here I can see that I have a dedicated command for this. It's uh, start dev, which uses nodemon uh, to start the process. And I'm gonna run this npm run start <coughs> dev. This started the process with with watching enabled. Let's double check the process still runs. So the most simple, probably most simple application change I can do is to go into the controller. <clears throat> and here I have the find all method, which is used by this um, endpoint. 
Here I'm thinking that I can uh, override the data with uh, basically nothing. This is easy to see. I save the file and as you saw in this terminal, uh, the application got restarted. If I refresh, I have uh, as expected an empty array there. If I again save the file after I delete the line I added, the app will get restarted and if I hit refresh, I will have the entries once again. So this is it. Uh, this is the remote development. This is how it works in Bunny Shell in the version with um, local files. For the version without local files, we'll do a separate video and also stay tuned for the remote debugging um, experience as well. Thank you.